Chelsea set their sights on Lukaku. Man City stunned PSG in a second half masterclass. Real Madrid eye two defenders. Leipzig may have found their new manager and a transfer roundup all coming up on today's One Football Daily News. As I'm your host, Angelina Kelly, let's get into it. First up, and it seems like Chelsea have found the latest player to top their transfer wish list, and it's Romelu Lukaku. He has been absolutely outstanding for Inter Milan this season, and he's definitely played such a massive role in their form as they look set to lift their first Serie A title in quite a while. Of course, Lukaku was at Chelsea before, and it didn't quite work out, but with his form this season, you can completely understand why they would be interested, and especially when you look at some of the form of their forwards that they already have. I mean, first up, Timo Werner, let's all be honest, it has been an absolute absolute shambles since he arrived at Stamford Bridge and he's just missing chances left right and centre most recently the other night in the Champions League semi-final first leg against Real Madrid when he missed that absolute sitter it's not been great so you can understand why they would want reinforcements and then of course there's Tammy Abraham he hasn't really been getting enough game time and apparently it has been reported that the club is set to listen to offers for the player in the summer of around 40 million pounds and then on top of this you've got Olivier Giroud he is reportedly unlikely to renew his contract with Chelsea, so they definitely have some space to bring Lukaku in. At the time of filming, Lukaku has managed 27 goals in 40 appearances for Inter Milan. Absolutely phenomenal from the player. And he seems to have really transformed himself since we last saw him in the Premier League, which was of course with Manchester United, where his form was questioned at times. Like I say, it didn't 100% work out at Manchester United, it didn't work out with Chelsea, so you can understand why he would be a little bit apprehensive to return back to the Premier League. He's been there, done that, got the t-shirt, and life with Inter Milan at the moment is so brilliant that Chelsea are really going to have to pull out all the stops if they really do want Lukaku to put pen to paper. Next up and last night Manchester City managed to absolutely stun PSG as they managed to turn their semi-final fixture completely on its head as they finished the game two goals to one away from home in Paris. Now don't get me wrong PSG 100% controlled the first half of the game. They were absolutely phenomenal. They totally ran the show and I think that City were really lucky that actually PSG only managed to score one goal but whatever Pep Guardiola said at half-time definitely worked as Manchester City were completely transformed in the second half. They were powerful, they were aggressive and like I say, they managed to score those two important goals away from home. Now, the two goals probably could have been avoided by PSG and I think that Mauricio Pochettino will be a little bit disappointed with how his team did concede the goals. I mean, the first one, it just managed to sail over the defenders' heads. Nobody managed to really find that cross. And then the second goal, one of the worst defensive walls I have ever seen. It was an absolute shambles. You had Marco Verratti lying on the floor. The wall was just really poorly constructed. It just wasn't great. And in a way, PSG kind of deserved to be punished with the goal in the end. But don't get me wrong, PSG have all the quality moving forward to try and turn the game back on its head as they head to Manchester. They do tend to be performing better away from home, but you do have to applaud Manchester City on this one. PSG do have a big mountain to climb. Looking at statistics, all of the 47 previous outings that English clubs have had in the first leg of a knockout phase, they have actually managed to progress to the next round every single time. So let's hope that Manchester City can continue that. But for me, I think the main thing about this is that maybe Pep Guardiola has finally learnt his lesson when it comes to overthinking. Every single time that we've seen Manchester City get knocked out in the round of 16 or the quarterfinals, the blame has always heavily fell on Guardiola for overthinking. And I think there is a lot of evidence to support that. But finally, maybe like I say, he has learnt his lesson. There were no gimmicks, there were no shocks with Manchester City, especially when you look at that starting 11. It was arguably Pep's strongest. You know, he seemed a lot more confident, a lot more relaxed, and I think this did transcend into the players, and that's why they had such a great game. And this is really exciting times for Guardiola. Of course, previously, he has been criticised for not managing to get to a Champions League final in such a long time. We've not seen that European glory with Guardiola like we saw with Barcelona. And could his look finally be changing? Next up, and it is over to Real Madrid, and with their defensive back line so up in the air at the moment. We're not sure who's staying, we're not sure who's going, we're not actually sure who could even be arriving. It's only natural for Real Madrid to be looking at a couple of transfer options and there are two from La Liga. We've got Villarreal's Pau Torres and Sevilla's Jules Kunde. Of course, like I say, things really are up in the air. We've got Sergio Ramos, his contract hasn't been sorted out, we're not sure if he's going to be staying at the Bernabeu and then of course you have Rafael Varane. I mean, he did a pre-match press conference before Tuesday's Champions League fixture. He was asked three 
times about his future with Real Madrid and contracts, etc. And he didn't actually manage to give a clear cut answer. So he as well could be departing. So like I say, it's only natural for Real Madrid to be looking at a couple of options. And it makes sense to be looking at defenders that have already managed to prove themselves in La Liga. Of course, there is David Alaba who could be making the move to Real Madrid in the summer. According to reports in Germany, he looks set to sign on the dotted line with Los Blancos on a five year deal. But although Alaba could be coming, they do have Nacho Fernandez and Edo Militao as well. David Alaba is more of a left sided defender, so they would still need to bring in a right sided defender. And this is where Kunde and Torres come in. They are both young, impressive defenders without a shadow of a doubt. But apparently, looking at some of Kunde's recent appearances, he has managed to pip Torres to the top of the transfer wish list. Since Kunde's arrival in Sevilla two years ago, he has absolutely shone for the club and he has had so much interest from all over Europe. But more recently, of course, Manchester City and Manchester United have been interested. Now, his buyout clause is 90 million euros. Absolutely massive. And whilst his advisors do believe that he could maybe go for less, the club are apparently not willing to budge. However, Real Madrid do believe that they could bring the player in for around 50 to 60 million euros. And in addition, they would also give Sevilla Jorge de Frutos. Now he is a player that has been having a really successful loan period at Levante so maybe this could sweeten the deal. Meanwhile when you look at Torres he is still such an impressive player. I mean you look at his imposing physicality and his height, his intelligence, his ability to read the game. He really is impressive and also he is playing more regularly for the Spanish national team. Now his buyout clause is reportedly around 50 million euros so if Real Madrid did go with him he would be a cheaper option but they would still be getting a really good defender. I think what Real Madrid have to do now is just make a decision. Are they keeping Sergio Ramos and Rafael Varane or are they going to let them go? Are they going to bring in David Alaba and if they do need another defender in Torres or Koundé, they are going to have to act fast because these are two players that have got so much interest from other clubs around Europe so they're going to have to move quickly. And now over to Germany and with Julian Nagelsmann being announced as Bayern Munich's new manager for next season, of course RB Leipzig have been looking for a new manager themselves and it seems like they have found one. Now there were rumours that they were interested in RB Salzburg's Jesse March and these reports have now been confirmed. Salzburg spokesman Christian Kircher has come out and said that talks have already begun and there are already reports in Germany stating that personal terms have already been agreed. Now March already does have experience with Leipzig. He was there for a year when he was helping out Ralf Ragnick when he was managing the club and then in 2019 he made the move to Salzburg. Now his contract doesn't expire with the club until 2022 but he has already admitted in some interviews that he would be interested in the Leipzig job. Now March was already linked with the Eintracht Frankfurt job, Celtic job and Spurs job but with Salzburg and Leipzig being sister clubs you can kind of understand why he has made this move. I mean Leipzig so far this year in the Bundesliga they have been absolutely brilliant and whilst they will be losing the likes of Dio Pimikano and there are a couple of other players that have been rumoured with moves away it's still a really great team and I'm really excited to see what Marsh can do and of course the fact that he already does have experience with Leipzig is just an added bonus for the club. And finally, we have our transfer roundup. This is where I take a look at some of the other news and transfers going on in the footballing world. And first up, AS have reported that Atletico Madrid have reportedly spoken to Juventus about a swap deal with Paolo Dybala and Alvo Morata so that Juventus could sign Morata on a permanent deal as he is, of course, on loan at the club from Madrid. Next, over to Arsenal. And Daniel Ek has not made an official formal bid for Arsenal Football Club yet, but the bid is rumoured to be around £1.8 billion and is to be expected in the coming days. Norwich manager Daniel Daniel Fark is on the wish list of two German clubs in Eintracht Frankfurt and Wolfsburg. And finally, Bruno Fernandes has stated in an interview that one day, hopefully many years from now after he is retired, he would love to coach Manchester United. So that is everything for today's One Football Daily News. Make sure you check out all the other content that we've got here. And until next time, I will see you all later.